I have read a lot of great sequels in my life, but I may just have found the best sequel to a first book in my life. And I know book reviews don't do well on the channel, but I don't care. When you read a book that is this good, you just have to talk about it. Well, some of my favorite sequels I've ever read include The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn, The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan, Age of Sin by Daniel T. Jackson, Jade War by Fonda Lee, obviously, and arguably my all-time favorite sequel, Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanchez. I mean, this book is so good. But as I said, I may or may not have discovered a new all-time favorite sequel. I mean, this book literally blew my mind. And that is The Wall of Storms by Ken Liu. Now, I've already made a full spoiler-free dedicated review for The Grace of Kings, and this will also be 100% spoiler-free, so don't worry if you haven't read the first book. But I just really, really need to talk about this book because this book, which is around... 850 pages is a masterpiece from page one all the way to the end. I mean, in almost every single way you can even think about, this book is a step up in quality from The Grace of Kings. And The Grace of Kings is one of my favorite reads of the year, which should tell you something. This book is incredible. Now, in a lot of ways, similar to The Stormlight Archive, where The Way of Kings is a phenomenal book and Words of Radiance is just like The Way of Kings, just better. This book feels similarly. The Grace of Kings, a masterpiece, but this book just takes everything that was good with The Grace of Kings and also some of the issues I ha did have with The Grace of Kings and it just improves on every single aspect. So let's just briefly talk about why this book is so, so good. And don't you worry, I'll, as I said, I will keep this 100% spoiler free and I haven't prepared anything for this review, so this might be a bit chaotic, but oh well. Here we go. Now, as many of you know, Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee is one of my favorite books of all time. And the reason why I love this book so much is because it is a multi-generational story where you basically follow characters over 10 years. And I just think it's so ambitious and it just works. Now, why am I even talking about this book? Well, it's just because The Grace of Kings and even The Wall of Storms are these multi-generational stories. I mean, just the sheer ambitiousness of Ken Liu to write a story that spans over such a long period of time is just mind-blowing. I mean, if you thought that Jade Legacy was ambitious, read this series. This is truly the tale of a whole dynasty. This series in The Grace of Kings starts at before this dynasty was even formed and it is mad where we end up at the book too. I can't even imagine where this series is going to end. I can just imagine maybe we'll get another 10 or 20 years of history because this book starts or takes place five years after The Grace of Kings. So already there you have a sense of how big the scope is. And what I said in my spoiler review of The Grace of Kings, which is so unique about this whole series, is that it almost reads like a history book in some ways. It almost feels like you're looking down on this massive map and you hear about all of the different events of what has happened in this massive world and how these events impacted all the political decisions that were made and how this empire was formed. And my tiny criticism with The Grace of Kings was that the story felt very, very plot driven. I mean, the characters were really well realized and so on, but I maybe just felt like that maybe Ken Liu sometimes didn't spend enough time of fleshing out some of the characters before he killed them off. And in a lot of ways, this book feels quite similar to The Grace of Kings, except that the characterizations is taken to a whole another level. I would really say that if you didn't really vibe with The Grace of Kings, give this book a read because the characterizations is so much better in this book. I mean, these characters are already some of my all-time favorite now. They just feel so, so real and they're so, so complex. And speaking of characters, another thing I love love about this world. Even though you have some characters you definitely root for, I've never really felt yet that I know who is the bad guy or the good guy in this world. What I find so, so fascinating is that the so-called good guys in this series, you can really, really see how much they're struggling with setting up this new dynasty and all their internal struggles about how do you actually lead a people? How do you actually do what is the best for the whole empire? And you can see how flawed these leaders are and how they're just really trying to do their best but they can also acknowledge that they're actually really maybe not the most ideal leaders. And then you have in this book, and this is, I will say, spoiler free, but you have a group which I will probably call the colonizers. And you will think that the colonizers were the bad people. And in a lot of ways, they are quite horrendous, if I'm being totally honest. 
But what Ken Liu does so, so brilliantly is that he allows the reader to understand where the colonizers are coming from. We get a lot of their history. And, and after having read this book, I wouldn't say that I actually rooted for the colonizers, but I actually understood their motivation so much better. And I've said this before, but I love, love when an author actually allows a villain to ha have a POV. But in this case, we actually get a whole story for the so-called colonizers or the villain group in this series, which I thought was just so, so fascinating. And it definitely gives you that experience of, actually, this isn't a world where you have good or evil, even though both of those things exist, but there's just so much nuance when it comes to how can Lou deals with the aspects of who's the good persons and who are the bad persons, because the good persons, they're good, but they definitely have a lot of issues. And the so-called colonizers, they are, they are really terrifying and absolutely horrendous, but you kind of understand where they're coming from, which gives you that weird feeling of you don't fully know who to root for because you kind of understand where the bad guys are coming from, but you also want your main protagonist in this series to win. So I just think that was just massively handled. I really think that Ken Liu, he just seems to understand human beings ever so well. And it's especially the analysis of power and how to set up a society and how difficult it is to actually be a good role model as a leader for a big empire that is just masterfully handled. And I've said it again, but human nature is a big, big theme throughout this whole story. And Ken Liu, he just absolutely masterfully writes characters that feel so real. Really, think about it. If you were set in a position where you knew you had some good ideals, and you now were in the position where you could actually set up a whole country or an empire, do you think you'll be able to execute it? In most cases, I think most of us would say no. We probably wouldn't be able to do a good job. And we really get a sense of how challenging it is to be a leader, which I just find so, so fascinating. Okay, I do apologize that this review is just so all over the place, but I just need to talk to someone about this book. Also, another thing that I love, love in fantasy. So I already mentioned, I love when a book is multi-generational because it feels so ambitious, especially if it's handled well. And... Another thing I love in fantasy is when the politics are done well. And I am serious here, this might be the book or fantasy book that has the best politics I've ever come across in fantasy. And that is high praise for coming from me, but man, the tension in a lot of the dialogues and how people talk together and how the leaders interact is just, it's incredible. And there's so much backstabbing and maneuvering and stuff like happening behind the back. And you can just see all of these many pieces being moved around and falling into place and then being put out of place. And I mean, I swear guys, the politics is incredible. And even if you hate politics and fantasy, maybe give this book still a read because I just can't emphasize enough how riveting a lot of those scenes were where politics was like at the heart of it. So I definitely did appreciate that. But I also have to mention that Ken Liu, he is a master at writing combat scenes and war battle scenes. I mean, we have some seriously epic war scenes in this novel and it just blows my mind because usually I'm not that fascinated by the action scenes. Usually I'm much more interested in the politics and the dialogue. But even here, especially one scene where we have this, this huge huge um, air battle was so cinematic and in this book we also have the introduction of a new animal species which I will not even tell you what they're like because you just need to read to figure them out but but I just think that the world building is just top top notch and the animal companions here if you can even call them animal companions are so so memorable it's definitely some of the most memorable animals i've ever come across in fantasy and then i just have to say one more thing before i end this review but the thing that i just love so much about the grace of king was just how big this world felt the scale of the world felt massive and i didn't see it coming but in this book the world is expanded even more, we actually get to see that this world is actually way, way bigger than we could even fathom. So if you thought The Grace of Kings was epic, this book takes it to a whole another level because yeah, everything just expands, but it is just done so, so well. Oh, I also need to mention what I just really, really appreciate with this series is that the stakes feel real. The amount of characters that have already died in book one and two is just astounding. And Ken Liu, he is not afraid of killing off some really, really significant characters. And again, it just really adds to that element that everything just feels so real here. Because the humans feel real, the stakes feel massive, and the world building is just 
it's so intricate. And then what I just really appreciate is that it, this book and this series just also makes you think about human nature and morality and how to lead a country and so on and so on. Now I know that this review probably made no sense because usually I always script all my reviews but I just had to talk to someone about this book. It is absolutely incredible. I can't wait to read book three and four next. But again, I just want to emphasize, I don't think this series is going to be for everyone, especially The Grace of Kings is a book that can be a bit of a hard sell. But I would say that if you struggle with The Grace of Kings, give this book a read. Read at least the first 200 pages, see if you like them, because I can tell you the first 200 pages are brilliant. And if you don't like the series by that point, then that's absolutely fine. It's not going to be a series for you. But I really hope more of you will actually give this series a read because this series is so ridiculously good, at least the first book and especially book two. And having a book that is this good and not that many people having read it is just criminal in my opinion. One of my all-time favorite sequels, possibly my all-time favorite sequels, and more people just need to read it. This is a definite 5 out of 5 stars or 6 out of 5 stars if I can give you that. In a lot of ways it almost feels like this book was written for me because I just loved everything about it. So that is it. I absolutely can't wait to read book 3 soon and this will definitely go down as one of my all time favorite books for sure. So thank you so much for watching and as always a special thanks to my patrons for what we do here. I really appreciate it.